Chapter 3, Stoichiometry, is another review uh, from Chemistry 1. We're going to talk about balancing equations and uh, some stoichiometric calculations involving grams to moles, moles to grams, uh, theoretical yield, and some empirical formulas. Let's start off by talking about one of the very important laws in chemistry. Uh, the previous chapter, we talked about the first two important laws, the law of multiple proportions and the law of definite proportions. This chapter relies heavily on the law of conservation of mass. Antoine Lavoisier in the 1700s came up with the statement that you see listed here on the screen. Now, essentially to summarize all of this up into one sentence, we could say mass can be neither created nor destroyed. So if it shows if we put so much of something into a reaction, we must also get that same amount out. Uh, for example, if it shows up on the reactant side, it must show up on the product side. All right. Well, let's look at a chemical equation. That will help us represent what's happening at a molecular level in um, some of our reactions. Uh, here we have space filling models representing the combustion of uh, methane. We have CH4 and oxygen molecules forming CO2 and water. Let's look at a little bit of the anatomy of a chemical equation. Of course, we know that chemical equations show the chemicals or the molecules or the formula units that are involved. On one side of the reaction, on the right side, uh, I'm sorry, the left side, we have the reactants or the things that we are going to mix together. On the right side of the reactant, we have the products that are being formed or the new things that are coming from our reaction. We also have um, the states of matter listed in parentheses. We have four states of matter in terms of uh, a chemical equation. Solid, liquid, gas, and aqueous. You should remember those from chemistry one. Um, the only one you may forget it would be aqueous, and that just simply means dissolved in water. The coefficients in a chemical equation help us to balance the chemical equation. Remember, the law of conservation of mass says we can neither create nor destroy matter, so if it shows up on one side, it has to show up on the other side in the exact same amount. And we can make that happen by changing the coefficients. All right, the chemical symbols. Um, let's take a closer look at those. When dealing with subscripts, subscripts tell the number of atoms present in each molecule or formula unit. You should remember that when balancing an equation, we cannot change the subscripts. A coefficient, however, tells the number of molecules, and we can change the number of molecules easily. Okay, um, that's as a matter of fact. The only way we can balance a chemical equation is by changing the coefficients. All right, let's briefly look over three reaction types that hopefully you will remember from Chemistry One. This is not by any means an inclusive list. We will get into this in more detail in the next chapter. But um, here are the three simplest types of reactions that you should be familiar with. The first one is a combination reaction. I usually call these a synthesis reaction. Uh, in this type of reaction, we typically have two simpler substances coming together to form one single product. And we have uh, a combustion action of magnesium and oxygen here. They are coming together to form the oxide of that magnesium um, compound, magnesium oxide. Combustion of uh, nitrogen, I mean, I'm sorry, the synthesis of ammonia, we take nitrogen gas and hydrogen gas <coughs> in a certain proportion. Um, the, the combination reactions, again, two simpler reactants, one uh, single product. The exact opposite of a combination reaction or a synthesis reaction is a decomposition reaction. We're going to have a single reactant breaking down into two or more simpler substances. An example I have listed is um, calcium carbonate breaking down into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. Potassium chlorate, that's how we will actually uh, uh, form some oxygen here a little bit later on. We, we will get the potassium salt um, in a decomposition reaction, break it down. Remember, decomposition reaction, one single reactant, two simpler products. And the third type of reaction I want to talk about is a combustion reaction. Combustion reactions must have oxygen as one of their reactants. Must have oxygen as one of their reactants. Typically we look at um, combustion reactions, or, or another way you can tell that a combustion reaction is happening, is you typically have a lot of heat and light that are being generated. A great amount of energy associated with 
a combustion reaction. If we have a combustion reaction involving a hydrocarbon, okay, hydrocarbons contain hydrogen and carbon uh, reacting with oxygen, we will form always CO2 and water. If we have a hydrocarbon, hydrocarbon combusting, we know that it's combustion because it has oxygen, it will always form CO2 and water. Again, these are three um, brief overviews of uh, types of reactions that we will go into more detail about in the next chapter.